Ladies, gentlemen, whoever or whatever you identify as, welcome back to the show. Red, welcome to another video. Right then, article Doctor Who. Let's have a laugh. Let's see what this one has to say. Yeah, <laughs> Doctor Who's timeless child retcon is officially pointless. The timeless trial was pointless. But in any case, we should continue. Chris Chibnall retconned a storyline that revealed the Doctor as the timeless child, but now the twist seems to be officially pointless. Really, does it? Okay, let's have a look. Doctor Who's timeless child retcon was officially pointless. Chris Chibnall's tenure as Doctor Who showrunner <coughs> excuse me, was remarkably controversial. <laughs> There's a fucking understatement. <laughs> Remarkable. It, all it was was controversy. But in any case, at the heart of the comedy was his unexpected decision to rewrite the franchise's law by revealing the Doctor is not a time order after all. And in fact, he, it says she here, but it's he, was in fact the timeless child who originated from beyond this universe and who became the base genetic code for the entire Time Lord race. And thus, therefore, immediately destroyed 50 years of canon. But you know what? They say it was unexpected. It wasn't unexpected. This is the kind of stupid shit that he was going to pull because he never liked Doctor Who in the first place. Let's be brutally honest. Remember, it was um, just a lot of people pointlessly running down corridors. Yeah. Things remember stay on the internet. Chris, remember that. Chibnall originally came up with the idea of the Thomas Show back in the 80s. He was just a, a fan watching the classic series. Well, if it, that's true, and he come up with it in the 80s, he's more of a dick than I thought he was. <sighs> it's loosely inspired by hints uh, from Sylvester McCoy's era of the Doctor, which was more than just the Time Lord, seeded into the narrative by the script editor Andrew Cartmel. Both Chibnall and the 13th Doctor, Jodie Whittaker, due to depart. Yes, I mean, does anyone even give a shit? Has anyone paid any attention to the fact they're going? I mean, it seems that all we're interested in, and I've done a video on it, and she's overshadowed the live stream. No one cares. Only everybody who just wants to watch David Tennant. But any case, the upcoming Doctor Who centenary special. No one will care. In truth, it feels like their time is already wrapped up. Yep, it's gone. No one cares. Doctor Who magazine's number 577 contains a final interview with Chris Chibnall discussing this time on the show. The spin-offs have been announced in other mediums featuring secondary characters from the era that normally doesn't happen until after the final episode. Given that's the case now, it seems the right time to evaluate Chris Chibnall's Chimeless Child retcon. Well, no, it wasn't. It was a nuclear fucking bomb that destroyed 50 years of canon. But remember, their entire purpose was to get rid of the white male gaze. So there you go. Speaking to Doctor Who magazine, Chris Chibnall explained the Thomas Child retcon was a very personal idea for him because as someone who was adopted as a child, he wanted to tell the story of adoption. This was not a story of fucking adoption. They, that woman, Tectayune, found this child, took her back to Gallifrey and continually fucking murdered her until she got what she wanted. Now, uh, bear with me now if, well, you know, I don't see a lot of people adopting children doing that. Because it's a very bad thing to do, but we'll just ignore that. <sighs> Looking beyond his personal experiences, though, Chibnall intended the Thomas Child retcon to further expand the franchise. The thing I wanted to dispel was his sense that there was locked in fixed myth. No, that was the point. It's called canon, you dick. He observed, and it's only the stuff that cancer has been on the screen so far. I wanted to make it feel like the story could get much bigger than this. Why? It's Fucking perfectly acceptable. I mean, it wouldn't have been going for 50 fucking years if it was shit. But in any case, mm, Chibnall hoped to expand the on screen universe to stop the show ever having to worry about the regeneration cap and allow writers to tell stories as many doctors as they want. Yeah, let's just fuck it all around. To be fair to Chibnall, some have been able to look beyond the story itself and understand his motives. But just to make a fucking name for himself. In any case, I would to tell a story about adoption. <clears throat> Returning showrunner Russell T. Davies supports the Thomas Child retcon, believing it opens up storytelling potential. But now the 13th Doctor has shown us Doctor's galore with infinite possibilities, he wrote in an online introduction to a prequel of his first Doctor Who story. All the Doctors exist. All the stories are true. Great. Hmm. Looking forward to this. Any case, unfortunately, the Thomas Child retcon was executed in a rather clumsy fashion. No, it fucking wasn't. It was done exactly what he wanted. It's a huge change to Doctor Who law. No, it completely erased the law and just created a pointless thing. 
we now have a show where there is zero peril. The hero, the doctor, can't die. He can be killed many, 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 many times and nothing fucking happens. You've literally made the hero indestructible. You've now made Doctor Who Captain Scarlet. Well done. Any case, let's carry on. <sighs> Fundamentally, though, it doesn't ch it doesn't challenge the actual character of the Doctor at all. I mean, fucking does. Any case, oh my god, whoever wrote this is a dickhead. Chibnall even signposted this in the episode explaining the wreck on the Thomas Child with Joe Martin and Fugitive Doctor appearing in a Matrix version to reassure the Doctor that it doesn't really matter. Have you, have, have you ever been limited by who you were before? She asked, reminding the Doctor of the truth that allowed us to break out the Matrix. Bollocks. The Thomas Child changes everything and nothing. No, it changes everything and destroys everything. If you really believe it doesn't change anything, you're a fucking lunatic. The Timeless Child Retcons allowed Chibnall to introduce past incarnation of the Doctor, played by Joe Martin. No, we don't actually know where she comes into it, do we? Because that was never covered. It's just a presumption, and we'll make sure that, actually, we'll put her before William Hartnell, because that would make sense, wouldn't it? Because, you know, let's just destroy that as well while we're at it even though William Hartnell was the first Doctor, and you'll never fucking change it. And if you want to have a fight, we can have. Okay, it's just the way it is. She's been highlighted the series. Well, no, she appeared slightly and then disappeared. And now it's literally been thrown under the bus. Debuting in the future of the Jadoon, leaving viewers fascinated to learn more. No, not really, other than the actual question that should be asked is why the fuck wasn't she hired to play the Doctor? Because she was way better than Jodie. Joe Martin, I doff my cap to you. You were brilliant. Any case. Surprisingly, though, in his interview in Doctor Who magazine, Chibnall Review of the Future Doctor was a spontaneous edition. The mystery character was originally supposed to be some sort of alien princess. So, in other words, yet again, he proves that he just threw some sh random shit in it because he couldn't think of anything fucking better. What a brilliant writer he is. <sighs> That perhaps explains why, when Chibnall did revive the future Doctor's past, he resorted to classic tropes that had been used so many times before, and hence lacked any dramatic impact. <laughs> she was used to tie the Doctor to a secret Gallifreyan Black Ops group called the Division, which we all knew about in any case, but if you watch Classic Hue, you would know about that, but... Who policed the timeline, and she went rogue because she going to disagree with their methods. Yeah, okay, whatever. <clears throat> Doctor Who flux of the 13th Doctor finally discovered her adopted mother Tech Tayoon in the Division's headquarters it was an adopted mother she took her, she stole her and she fucking murdered her over and over again I'd call that a mother, would you? any case <laughs> where she delivered the basic info dump that promptly, before promptly being killed off didn't regenerate herself then funny that, any case the info dump contained a seed of an interesting, frankly profoundly disturbing idea. Tactoon compared her relationship with the Doctor to the Doctor's relationship with the Companions, suggesting the Doctor's inability to commit was, un uh, was the unwitting per per perpetration of a cycle of abuse deeply ingrained within her psyche. Okay, and this dates back to McCoy, Sylvester McCoy's time as the Doctor, where the Seventh Doctor treated his companion Ace as a pawn, and Peter Capaldi era interrog interrogated the idea as well. The cycle of abuse was new, suggesting that Tectoy in the Division was shaping the Doctor more profoundly than she had ever realised. This had the potential to serve as a launch pad, forcing the Doctor to confront her own flaws, but instead the show pivoted on the Doctor companion romance that didn't quite work, because it was never fucking there in the first place. Was it now? No, because we've touched on this on multiple occasions. It was squeezed in to appease people who don't watch the fucking show. Pure and simple. That's why it's shit. That's why no one cares about the centenary. And as soon as David Tennant was announced, everybody was more interested in that. And no one gives a flying fuck about Jodie Whittaker and the 13th Doctor anymore. 
Rather than resolving to heal, rather than step forward in hope that she could change in the Legend of the Sea Devils, the doctors rejected Yaz because she lacked hope. I can't fix myself, she reflected, to anything, anyone or anywhere. I've never been able to. That's what my life is. Yeah, whatever. Whitaker's delivery added more power than ours for them. No, no, no. It wasn't. It was delivered as dead pan as that. There was no fucking emotion in it. What's a fucking ever? It's sad to see the Doctor's era come to an end in such brokenness and defeat. Because that sums up exactly what this era of uh, Doctor Who was done to, actually done to Doctor Who. Which is broke it and left it in a sad pile of shit. Frustratingly, Chibnall has seemed to have no interest in exploring any more of the interesting questions that stem from the Timeless Child retcon. Doctor Who Flux established the Timeless Child's multiverse, unit, multiversal origin, revealing the Doctor originates from somewhere beyond this dimension. We didn't really fucking say that, but there you go. The multiverse is all the rage of public culture right now. Yes, and they're all fucking shit. The only decent thing I've seen in the multiverse is um, Family Guy. Everything else, multiverse, I just don't fucking want it. What? It's just lazy, isn't it? It's just lazy. With franchises such as the MCU and even Buffy the Vampire Slayer using it in remarkably creative ways, the multiverse opens in fresh opportunities for exploration. There can be dimensions similar to our own where everything is just a little different or there can be others where the laws of physics operate in a completely different way. Chisel's decision to incorporate the multiverse into the story on the time trial is inspired. No, it's not, but sadly flawed. Because having tossed the idea in there, he hasn't bothered to explore it. Because that's exactly what he's done with every single fucking bond he wrote. And that's how why this show is so shit up until now. It's because we come up with an idea and then we forget about the idea and run out of it before we've even got to the end of it. I mean, we had somebody suffering from dyspraxia. And then it was forgotten. And there's multiple occasions where things have said and then completely forgotten. Because he can't write. He hasn't got a fucking brain. Any case, I continue. Indeed, it seems that he had no intention. When Doctor Who magazine asked him about Doctor's true origin, he gave the simple answer, I don't know. Nobody knows. That's the point. Everything we've done goes back to the central idea. Well, we did. We knew he'd come from Gallifrey. Well, we used to. Until you fucked it up. Chibnall seems to want to get back to asking questions about Doctor's identity again without making any attempt to answer them. Because he can't, because he's an idiot. Chibnall expects the timeless child to be ignored by his successor returning showrunner Russell T. Davis. In part, this is presumably because he thinks he's said that all needs to be said about the timeless child and does not believe that any other showrunner would be interested in exploring the unanswered questions either. No, because this should never have been opened in the first place. And let's be brutally honest, for a lot of people, unless it's retconned, and unless it's reversed, they won't be watching the new Doctor Who ever, either. Because it's a big thing for a lot of people. It really is. It's a huge sticking point, any case. But it's like, it is also likely that he's aware that the Timeless Child retcon has been not, hasn't been well received. The history of Doctor Who is one of the most countless pivots, retcons and changes in direction. Chibnall will be well aware that Doctor Who... TV movie established the Doctor was half human back in 1996, for example. An idea that was then ignored until con the controversy had been forgotten and then dismissed with a throwaway line of dialogue. It wouldn't be surprising if something similar would happen to the timeless child, and that is exactly what needs to be done. It needs to be got rid of. In the meantime, Chibnall has attempted to pivot his last few episodes on about the timeless child because he forgot about it, because he did it just for the shock value and couldn't give a fuck. It wasn't part of his story, it wasn't part of anything. It was just enough to screw everybody over and then he walked away and pretended it didn't happen. Rather, they've committed to a flawed Doctor Companion romance, which was never there, which was shit, pointless and... Ugh. We've covered it many times. I've covered it many times. I'm bored of talking about the suck shit. The arc is notable because for the first time the Doctor has been part of the LGBTQ romance. But unfortunately, it feels forced. That's because it fucking was. It was squeezed in there to a piece. But we've covered this multiple times. This is partly because it was poorly signposted. No, it wasn't. But it's also because it's clearly set to end in tragedy with both actors being involved in leaving in Doctor Who's centenary special. Highlighting a problematic trope with that historically befalls queer relationships. What? Hey? Really? 
This also means, unfortunately, Chipmunks are unlikely to have a legacy, much of a legacy on small screen. It's disappointing to see how it ended like this. No, it's not. It's getting exactly what it fucking deserves, ladies and gentlemen. It deserves to be forgotten. It deserves to be rotting away in hell and never mentioned. Now, I do know there are a lot of people out there. Well, right now, there's a few people out there. There's some, there's a couple of people out there who really do like this show with Jodie Whittaker in it. And for you, that's absolutely fine. I'm happy for you. I genuinely am. I, I, I'm not one of these idiots to go around attacking people over it. I couldn't give a shit. If you like it, you like it. I don't give a toss, really. But if I don't like it, that's also, you should give a shit. That if I don't like it, it's just the way it is. But the simple truth of the matter is, it's shit. It almost destroyed Doctor Who. And we're not sure whether it can come back. Although at the moment, the way things are being said, with, with the 60th coming up, with David Tennant and, and the rumblings, maybe it will. But you put it in this position, Chris Chibnall, you and Jodie Whittaker, both of you, put it in the position that it's in now, which is it's on its knees. And that's your fault. It's all on you. Nothing else. No one else. You, your writers, and the people who can't fucking act for Toffee that were in that show. But then again, what do I know? I'm just a fat bloke sitting in the shed surrounded by his toys. You let me know what you think. The comment section down below. You know what to do. It's there for you. Feel free. Fill your boots as long as you don't get stupid and nasty. You let everybody else know and me what you think. That's really, really cool. If you enjoyed this video, just give it the old thumbs up if you wouldn't mind. It would be much appreciated. Thank you very much. If you want to subscribe, down there, right there, if you can. Little arrow will be telling you where it is. Hover over that, hit the subscribe button, and you'll be subscribed to my channel, and I will be eternally grateful. And if you are done that, you hit the bell, bell, notification, if YouTube don't turn it off. And those of you who are subscribed, every now and again, check to see if YouTube hasn't turned the bell off, because it really likes to do that a lot. So, with that, and as always, and until the next one, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to love you and leave you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your support. So until the next one.